Okay, so welcome to the Rex Academy sales team. Um, we're just going to go through the Texas document. I'll make this as short as possible. These are just really the basic highlight points that uh, sales needs to know before you uh, pitch to somebody in Texas, okay, especially if it's a public school, which most of them are probably. So state of Texas, the great news is that they have really well written standards. It's some of the best standards in the country. They have a really deep a computer science standard that we can draw from and create courses from. So as always, this document just kind of starts with, uh, be sure to highlight a lot of the Rexus features. This is how, one of the ways we can uh, distinguish ourselves uh, from others. Um, really the biggest thing is our depth of curriculum. So uh, our curriculums are really in depth and we've built them to really test the depth of knowledge and not be surface level, okay? So a couple of things uh, you should know for Texas. Um, first of all, this is the most important part. Uh, all Texas public high schools, and I believe charter schools as well, must have Computer Science 1 and then either Computer Science 2 or Computer Science 3 uh, within its uh, offerings for any given high school. So. Any high school you go to in Texas, they must offer this course. Sometimes this will be a both regular and an honors course. So there will be Computer Science 1 and there will be Computer Science 1 honors. It's the same course, just the level of difficulty is different. Okay, And then one of these two. So they must be offered. So you have a, I know the high school I taught at had Computer Science 1, Computer Science Honors, and then had the APCS class. Okay. On top of that, all high schools must offer two of the following. So um, there's a lot of things to choose from. Some are more popular than others. Uh, we won't get into that right here, but uh, there's a lot of things that uh, we can pick from to create courses. So two of, the, of any of these must be offered. And again, this is across high schools in Texas. For the next part, let's focus on a few interesting facts. So again, the state of Texas for all high school graduates has a foreign language requirement, meaning anything other than English. So students must show proficiency in a uh, foreign language. Students can opt out of the foreign language requirement by taking three years of computer science instead. So these computer science classes count as a foreign language credit. So suppose uh, a student does not want to take a uh, uh, take Spanish, French, or German, or any of this stuff. They have the option of taking computer science one, and then APCS, and then something else that that school requires to fulfill their foreign language requirement okay so this is actually the case with both high school and any texas public university computer science programming courses may be used to fulfill the foreign language requirement for any degree okay just so just kind of remember that and finally in high school the apcsa class can be used to replace a math credit in uh, in any high school setting. So a typical high school require four math credits to graduate. This is usually algebra, geometry, algebra two, and then a fourth year course, which can be a multitude of things from statistics to pre-cal to, uh, um, there's a few other courses that, uh, uh, that they offer, but students have the option of taking a computer science course to take place of that math requirement uh, in texas this is certainly possible also cybersecurity is now part of the ct and stem education in texas so this is a big thing and what i did right after that this is the main subsection of texas chapter teaks their standards and i wanted to show that in it is now all of this is kind of now related that uh, they can take cybersecurity full, to fulfill a lot of career and technical education uh, CTE standards, okay? Okay, now, these are all the uh, classes that in high school, so this is high school, that Rex Academy is comfortable offering, meaning we have content, and if they were to order the, order the class, you would need to give me maybe like two to three weeks, but I can get this class up pretty quickly, meaning we already have a lot of content behind it. It wouldn't take me that much work to get up the content. So 
these numbers are the standards. They're the class standards, so that you can reference them in that manner. And uh, there, you'll please notice all these courses are not necessarily all these. Okay, we don't necessarily have content for all of this. So, for example, discrete math, we've never built this course, and we probably never will. It's just not in demand. Um, even though Texas has standards, hardly anyone's ever built that course. So this is something. Um, so when you offer courses, don't go by this list. Please go by this list. Now, next are the middle and uh, elementary school standards uh, and the courses that we offer. It is in a very specific manner. So for example, they can try to mix and match, but it's recommended that they follow this path. So this is what I would say, because programming uh, at least the type of programming we want. It's not grade six is a bit too early. So if they do programming Python in grade six, and they those kids may not be ready for that type of advanced programming. So it's better that they follow the formula that they see here. And same thing with elementary. And the Gantt chart simply uh, reinforce all of this from uh, um, um, elementary, middle to high school, that the order we give, there's a very specific method to the madness. If they start, you know, uh, going back and forth and kind of rearranging things and substituting, it may not quite have the effect that we really want. It's building these skills in a, is a very linear method. We slowly introduce more and more and more complex topics. So encourage schools to kind of follow these Gantt charts that you have and when they should be taking what. There's some extent they can exchange. So for example, if they want to take digital arts in the seventh grade and take game design in the sixth grade, uh, this wouldn't be too much of a problem. But uh, for the most part, it's best to follow these charts as, as well as possible. And then when you get to high school, there's a lot of options for them. Uh, if they want to purchase specific courses, they want to see specific courses. But again, follow these charts to the best of your uh, abilities. And then finally, these are all the courses. I'm sorry, these are all the certifications that students can take based on successful completions of their respective courses. So you can show this list to various uh, institutions and say, that, hey, look, if they take the networking class, they are set up to take the Network Plus CompTIA exam uh, if they so choose. Remind them that just taking the class does not necessarily guarantee success on these exams. These exams are tough. You have to prepare properly. And by the way, they're not free. Some of these exams are like $300 uh, for you to attempt them. They're, again, industry-level certifications. So they're not easy, certainly. So just it's just something I would hit to make sure that they understand it. Finally, as we get to the end, these are just some additional materials to highlight Rexus partnerships. Uh, let them know that we are aligned with all these standards. These are some of the people we have collaborated with. And here's a list of schools that we're already in. And so you can show them as uh, show them as uh, some uh, our references that here are some of the ISDs that are currently using our products. OK. All right. That's it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but these are the things that you really should highlight when it comes to the Texas standards.